And joining me now, NBC Chief White House Correspondent and Weekend Today, co-host Kristen Welker and former Missouri Democratic Senator Claire McCaskill. So, Kristen, first to you, you've been working so hard on all the ins and outs and what their thinking is. Take us through the major themes of the video announcement. What are your takeaways, what we expect to hear from the president of the Washington Hilton today when he meets with the labor union among his strongest supporters? Well, Andrea, you're absolutely right. And I think what we saw in that video is President Biden really built on themes that we have seen throughout his first term. And he unveiled, of course, during his State of the Union address, let's finish the job. We saw that featured prominently in that video. But you're absolutely right. What we also saw was this focus on a key theme from his 2020 campaign. Of course, this video coming four years to the date that he launched his 2020 campaign, this battle for the soul of America, as he has called it, this battle for America's freedoms and really putting former President Trump front and center. But, Andrea, of course, he is facing a lot of headwinds as well, a majority of voters saying that they don't want him to seek re-election, with many of those citing his age as a key concern. I actually had a chance to ask him about this right after the midterms. Take a listen. How does that factor into your final decision about whether or not to run for re-election? It doesn't. What's your message to them? Watch me. We've heard him say that line over and over again, Andrea, as well. Watch me. The other key thing that stood out to me from this video is the focus on his vice president, Kamala Harris, featured 11 different times in the video, a real sign that she's going to be central to the reelection effort. Expect her to focus on things like voting rights, abortion rights, which Democrats believe has really realigned voters. Uh, now, again, as you say, Andrea, he's going to be speaking to a key constituency today, the Builders Union a key labor group, and that is going to be critical to his re-election. Don't expect him to hit the campaign trail. Instead, expect him for the next several months to use the power of this office, Andrea. And, of course, Kristen and Claire, uh, Kamala Harris is going to be speaking in her big de live debut, aside from the video where she was featured so prominently. She'll go to Howard, her alma mater, where she announced her own race for the presidency. And, of course, one of the historic... HBCUs. So uh, that's going to be a big part of her constituency and a very important place for her. Uh, Kristen, thank you. And Claire, uh, you faced re-election tough battles and some, you know, difficult climates. So the, how does the president win with 70 percent of Americans who say he should not run and half of those individuals saying that his age is a major factor to them? Well, first of all, I think it's important to remember this is not a referendum. This is a choice. And he has got a lot of things going for him in that category. We have a Republican Party that is worshiping at the altar of extremism. We have the very far extreme fringe of the Republican Party in full display of whether it is in my state where the government is forcing rape victims to give birth or in other states where they are refusing to allow children to read historic books, the book banning, the, the guns, uh, the abortion rights, all of these things are being taken to such an extreme that independent voters, suburban mothers are all going, wait, we don't want that. We want something more normal. We want somebody who wants to unite the country rather than divide the country. Uh, the referendum is good for Joe Biden. The only thing he really has to worry about, I would say, not his age, but the economy. As long as the economy stays as robust as it is right now, I think this race is certainly his to lose. And the fact that a lot of people also really don't want a rematch. Uh, Christian, let me toss this to you from our poll, that people don't want to see Biden against Trump. Andrea, the numbers are staggering. We're talking about 5%. And when you actually match up Biden and Trump, President Biden uh, wins when it comes to favorability just by a very narrow margin. So if, in fact, we are gearing up toward a rematch of Biden versus Trump, that number is going to be critical to watch. And of course, the former president was out overnight bashing President Biden and his presidency, as was the RNC. They had this sharp video, this doom and gloom video, uh, effectively signaling that they plan to make the case that another four years of 
Joe Biden will be disastrous for the country and for the economy. What Claire is talking about, expect that to be a key theme as well, Andrea. And Claire, the Biden campaign is also hoping that uh, Trump will be the nominee, not a younger Republican who can highlight the age issue. Well, but, you know, Andrew, the problem is to win the Republican primary, you've got to cater to this extreme French. And Ron DeSantis just signed a very draconian limitation on women's rights and freedoms in Florida. What he has done in Florida, uh, frankly, he's trying to be a mini me. He's trying to be little Trump. And he is just as extreme and just as unpredictable and just as chaotic when it comes to foreign policy and support of American institutions as Donald Trump. So, so far on the horizon, no Republican candidate is getting any kind of traction that is anything other than very extreme for America. Yeah. And DeSantis is right now on a sort of round the world tour uh, before his campaign is officially announced, if it is going to be announced. Uh, so trying to burnish his foreign policy credentials in Asia and Israel now and then in the UK. Kristen Welker, Claire McCaskill, thanks to both of you so much on a big day in politics.